In this video we're going to be looking at Mesh Mixer as a tool to basically um, go through and help um, clean up your scan data, verify its size, and then prepare it for output. So this is going to be kind of the finished product that you're going to uh, work towards on this video. A um, couple quick notes. If you don't have a Mesh Mixer, you can get it for free. It's available at www.meshmixer.com and right over there is the download. It's available for Windows and Mac. Um, it's a really powerful program. Um, it does a lot as you can see some of the examples that um, are here in the, in the front page and all with it. Um, but it does have kind of like a different interface that you gotta get uh, used to. Um, and also it probably needs a little bit more powerful computer if you have a, a super amount of um, scan data. For our arm and head and stuff, it'll probably do fine. For like a full body scan, you're probably going to need to make sure you're using a fairly um, robust computer to take care of things. Also, um, I've uh, attached to this video uh, is a file that has several example um, scan files that we're going to be working off of. So make sure you download that and unzip it and have those available. And actually we're going to get started with one here. Uh, to get going. So I'm going to click on the import and I'm going to tell it to replace here but I'm going to turn off these two options to flip uh, ZY on import export and to remember my choice I guess. So let's hit replace and the file we'd like you to use so in that zip file you'll find three different folders underneath the head folder go to the face scan OBJ file. Okay, Open that up second to bring in and in this version it does orient it correct as far as the being vertical but I do want to just show you how to edit and re move it around and so forth um, as well. Now quick notes about um, how to move in um, mesh mixer. You got the view cube that you find in Autodesk products up here. You know you can click on different views and snap around to those and then also move like 90 degrees through it or click on the cube and kind of um, tumble. Um, you've got the options there. Um, I want to go ahead and switch it to orthographic. One thing Mesh Mixer does, now just to move in the window here, if you right mouse click it'll move around, but notice when you get to a uh, orthographic view such as like the right view, it actually goes ahead and snaps into that. So it's kind of nice and that'll help you to make sure you're looking at things properly and all. Okay, but this is currently facing to the right, so let's edit this and then move it up a little bit as well. So underneath the edit um, menu choice over here on the left, click on that, and it's transform is the tool that we want to use. Um, we're going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees, if I can get that to work around. And you can go ahead and figure out which axis to use, and then simply um, type in the exact value over here in the transform palette. Okay. Oh great. Well it went ahead and um, cleared out some other values that were in there. So let me just go ahead and rotate this all the way around. Uh, let's try that minus ninety. Okay. And just to verify real quickly, so this is the front view. Good. Now the second thing I'm going to do just to make sure, I'm going to pull this up a little bit so it's above the grid. We're going to use the grid in a little bit to bring a cylinder in and also I want after I cut this to make sure I have a little bit of gap there so that I can just place my cylinder on the grid, move it into position and then push it up into the model and everything be in good shape. Alright, so that's probably good enough for right now. Hit accept. Underneath the palette do I accept those changes. And whoops, I clicked twice. I don't want to do that. Go back to the edit menu. And now I'm going to do plane cut. So this allows us to basically slice off part of the model and close it up. So it's a very handy um, tool. So make sure it's set to cut, discard half, and then remesh fill. Okay. So I'm going to drag this down on the model and I'm going to rotate it up. Now I want to point out real quickly there's a little um, arrow right there. That is actually what you use to indicate the direction. So if you click on it, it's going to flip around. You want to make sure in this case that it flips down. The white is what's going to be cut away. I'm going to rotate this now 
and this is more just a visual style than anything so close to 20 there um, I'll end up using so that looks good um, let me pull it just a little bit alright and just hit accept okay so like I said once again let me turn off the grid so we can uh, see through this a little better um, it did go ahead and fill this um, let me show you in wireframe mode just exactly what it did. So the model out here is actually very dense um, as far as that. And it looks like it actually did a fairly dense model of this down here. So that's good. Okay. Let me go back to um, the corner view here. There we go. All right. And turn the wireframe off. And I'll turn the grid back on. Now, it did get kind of close to the grid. If I go to my side view, you'll see that. So. I'm actually going to transform it again and just pull it up a little bit more. So once again, we're going to put a cylinder in here. That's going to be kind of just the, the gap. Okay, I just wanted that to be a little bit higher. All right, so that takes care of um, that, you know, getting rid of the shoulders and all this. And at this point, I can actually check the size of the model. Um, that's one thing that's real important. Your scan data can get scale kind of wacky sometimes. So you always kind of, as you go through and work with the file, verify the different um, you know, sizes. So here in Mesh Mixer, if you click on Analysis and click on Units and Dimensions, it'll give you the overall bounding box size. Now, in this case, the one that we're really concerned about is from the uh, looking the front view outside of this ear to the outside of that ear. And so this dimension right across there in blue is that uh, value. So it ends up that it's 1 to 94, which is um, what it should be, okay? So I know my model's good as far as the correct size. So it just kind of depends on a head, outside ear, to outside ear works great. On a, a, a hand or an arm, probably something to measure across, you know, from like a knuckle to, or, or for, you know, across the fingers or something like that would be a good thing. On a foot, the ankle would probably, bones on the outside there would be a good thing to measure. All right, so let's do that. Now, let's look at cleaning the model up. So a couple different things here. Um, up here at the top, this has the, the beanie cap, and so those are the extra little fabric pieces that stick up and kind of make it look like it has some strange uh, things growing out of the top. So I'm actually going to select this, and I'm going to first show you how to just smooth this out. So if you have an area you want to kind of get rid of some of these bumps and stuff, or it's got a little, you know, some big waves and all, and you want to kind of smooth it out, this would be a good tool to use for something like that. Um, and then we'll look at come back erase and fill which will allow us to kind of get rid of these extra things here so to do this you actually go in and select um, the geometry first and then you'll get a me additional menus to work with it ends up because it's a polygon model using a brush technique it's kind of the define or, uh, or the um, default settings there and so if you notice you bring it out here it'll show you what's going to get selected so um, I will actually just click and drag on this and wrap, and wrap it around. Now, go ahead and do that and make sure I close up the whole thing. All right, and once we do that, like I said, you get some additional mute options up here. We'll go to deform and we'll choose smooth in this case. Now, it ends up goes ahead and does the default settings with it. Um, I'm just gonna hit accept just to show you this because I wanna clear this. And if you'll notice, it did smooth it out. There's no those little undulations that you find here at all anymore. It didn't handle these. Keeps those uh, um, with it. It's only good for you know kind of very subtle changes and stuff that it does clear things out. So yeah, it worked, but I still have these little uh, extra pieces sticking up. So I'm gonna look at a different technique. I'm gonna undo. And the one thing nice about undo in Mesh Mixer is that it actually goes back and brings up the tool so you can change settings and stuff there so it's kind of nice when it does that. Um, Alright, I can keep this or let me just start over again. I'm going to clear it, hit the select tool. Uh, now, I could do lasso. Let me just show you how you might use that. So let me go to this or switch to lasso here and that I will draw through this. And notice it projects it and kind of selects the geometry that way. So that's impossible, but um, so if you do something, you can easily pick from a, a side view or top view. That would work pretty good. All right, now let's instead keep it on the brush, and once again, just kind of go around and brush this whole area. 
Okay. Um, that looks good. Now I'm going to come over and this time go to edit and do the fill and erase and fill, excuse me. So what this does is it gets rid of the geometry that's there and actually fills it in with a new form. Now sometimes that form may match pretty good, other times you make it a little bit extra bump or bulge out of it. So here in the replace option palette I'm going to re um, reduce the bulge down. And, uh, that's probably not probably not one, like minus two or three. I think I may just type it in here. Oh, we're at two. Okay, I'll go for that. Um, and I'll hit accept that. Okay, and let's go hit clear. Now you'll notice it got rid of it and once again it made it nice and smooth through there. So if you're wanting to preserve um, detail and all within this, you know, it may not be the technique for you to use for doing it, but got did get rid of those big um, little bulges that were coming out. Alright, so that kind of cleans up this model. Now, one other check before we go in and start doing some other um, um, uh, connecting the cylinder at the bottom is to go to analysis and go to the inspect uh, menu and you can tell it what kind of ways you want to fill in any holes. I'll do smooth, although uh, flat and minimum probably work just as well. There's the, how big they have to be. We'll hit auto replace all, taking care of anything. We hit done to that as well. All right, now we're going to look at adding in the cylinder base. So mesh mixer, if you go up here and click on where it says mesh mixer, um, it does come with a lot of different um, objects that you can bring in and do some interesting things with. It is really designed um, to blend models together, where, aka where its thing comes from. So, you know, it's interesting if I drag this and place it out on that geometry, it actually orients itself relative to the surface. So if you want to do some interesting, you know, um, kind of details or add things like this, works great to do that. That's not what I want to do though. Let me instead go back to this, go back to the primitive menu, and I'm going to grab the cylinder and this time drop it on the grid area back here. Now it does come in super large, so I'll grab the scale uh, right there in the middle of the gizmo. Um, I'll tumble around because what I want to do is basically make this so this kind of fills up side to side. Now, another thing that happens with uh, bringing up the transform tool, this enable snapping comes uh, into play. So I'm going to turn that on so I can now uh, easily move this around and kind of be precise about it. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to actually build it up just a little bit size wise. So don't be worried if it's sticking down below this or into the model. The uh, upper part will be taken care of. And for this, we want to just make sure it's in the right spot. I can pull it back up. Okay. And I'm going to actually move it forward a little bit to balance that out. Okay. So that looks good. Hit accept. Now, when you place this in, it actually does keep this as a separate object. So if you go to View, Show Object Browser, you see that um, there is the original head and there's my complete uh, cylinder sitting there. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is need to combine these. I'm going to choose the face scan and that new cylinder. And when you do, you get a new palette that pops up relative to the um, uh, two items there. So I'm actually going to choose Boolean Union. And it'll go through and think about it a little bit how to refine it all. Um, for these kind of changes and all, it's really not that bad. Um, when you get into again, bigger files and more kind of subtle blending and stuff, it definitely can be a little more problematic. Um, don't worry about the advanced section here. Instead, focus right here on these two options. We're going to turn off Preserve Group Borders. And it'll think about it again. So this is the part where you're kind of like, I wish I could make some changes and hit apply because I gotta select something else as well. So and that is I want to turn off this auto reduce results. That way the cylinder stays a cylinder. Otherwise if you don't it'll like kind of um, try to 
uh, round out the bottom corners and all, and it just looks really hideous, like almost if you dropped it a couple of times. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, let's hit accept. Let that come through. Now you see we got one model here, but let's see if we can verify that we actually do have kind of that cut of the cylinder there um, relative to that. So I'm actually going to go back and choose plain cut. Um, I'm going to flip it so it points upwards, and I'm just going to pull through the model a little bit. Um, now it's kind of hard to see what's going on in reality, and it also it's wanting to put a fill in at the bottom here. I turn the fill type uh, to no fill, and you can see that sure enough, there's the cylinder. There's no extra part sticking in. It trimmed it properly in this case. Okay, so that's good. All right, so we got our model. We got a stand for it. Um, now what we need to see about doing is exporting this. So if you go to export. Um, you got several different options there. Definitely would say OBJ is probably the best format, just this first one here. Um, and you can use that definitely in Fusion to bring into the models there uh, with it. So we'll go with that. Um, so let me choose that. And I already had done one earlier. Uh, well, I'll do this head edit, OK? And then hit save. And it goes through and exports it out. should be good to go. Let me go look at that folder. So there it is, my original object right there. It's 77 megs. Here's my head uh, edits. That's 58 megs. So that's what you would use in other programs and all. Um, and you can also save this. So that's what head edits mixes is a mesh mixer file, MIX. OK, so I think we got everything covered there as far as what we wanted to do in this video to kind of show you this. I'll have some other videos that kind of show some other techniques as well.